everybody, Brandon with Bearded CB82, and today we're going to be taking another step back into uh, where I kind of started this channel off quite a while back, and that's on CNG. Today we're going to be talking about spark plugs and different points of failure within the spark plug, some things to look for for you guys that are just getting into uh, the CNG side of things. I've had a few questions here uh, between Instagram and here on YouTube. Uh, for uh, some troubleshooting tips, so I figured better get back into the swing of things with that. And I've been meaning to do this for a while because I've got a small pile of spark plugs here. We're going to flip the camera around, take a look at them, and discuss them uh, each individually uh, and other things you should look for if you happen to see patterns such as these. All right, so like I said, a little bitty uh, pile of spark plugs here I've been holding on to that uh, have, some of them have had different points of failure. Uh, first off, we're going to take a look at this. And as you see there, it was burning out through the side. Uh, sometimes that's an internal uh, failure within the spark plug itself. Uh, this spark plug, I think, had somewhere around 75 or 80,000 miles on it when I changed them out on a tractor this past week. Air compressor for all of you that love it. Uh, and yet you can see that's uh, quite an obvious little thing there. And yes, the boots usually will stay on the spark plug when you go to pull them out. This is why you use a regular 5 8 socket pulling these out. Uh, six point deep well. Now, as for the rest of it, you see a little bit of uh, oddball wear on the tip right there. That's not so uncommon. Um, occasionally these will foul out within that, sometimes uh, 50,000 miles, sometimes uh, 80, 90,000 miles. Uh, we usually try to change these out uh, every 75,000 miles uh, as per our shop for what we do. Cummins recommends 50 and then every 150,000 miles running the overhead. Uh, we've had fairly decent luck running 75,000 on each change and every other spark plug change, uh, we try to do the overhead. So there, oh, just a little bit oddball wear on that one. Now this one, as you can see, this is what I would call a pretty normal wear and tear you get a little bit of uh, cupping right there where it's starting to burn off the end overall i would call this nominal the whole way around um, here again as you see another orange one and a little bit of rust um, not uncommon with the thing uh, with our older trucks they're getting miles on them then also one thing to consider when you do start looking at these is take a really good close look at your extensions. Uh, now I've discussed this before where you have your ignition coil and your extension and testing these you've got pin A, B, C, and D and it's typically labeled somewhere here on the top on the newer ones it is, this is an older one. Uh, but pin A to pin B, you should have less than two ohms of resistance. Pin C to the end, and even when testing it with the extension screwed on, pin C to the end of the extension on the inside, yeah. uh, you're going to vary. Uh, this is where we'll, you know, you should have four and a half thousand ohms to five thousand ohms, depending on your coil. Now, whatever. Uh, pin C to the end of your coil, checking continuity. Say if we have 4.39 thousand ohms uh, or kilo ohms on the this, we should have less than 10 ohms of resistance optimally through your extension. And you can even test that from right there to the other tip. Give it a little flex, give it a little bend when you're doing that and if you get numbers that jump all over the place your extension's gone bad which is something we always check anyways because if you have an extension going bad there's uh, another point where you might see this 
And then one that I moved the other day, that is how something can last. Uh, yep, this was last week. However, it got stuck in there because the cap had cracked, most likely due to heat. When you pull the extension out, or pull the ignition coil out and it separated from the extension, uh, we'll replace those. Or if they do come out anyways and they're cracked, we'll pitch them. As otherwise it becomes a battle. But yeah, this one lasted uh, well over three years uh, back from when I was labeling them when I was putting them in. So that one, I'd say we got our money's worth out of that. Now, back to our spark plugs. Okay. This one, you see that is uh, coolant residue. And on this guy, EGR failure. So, well, the EGR cooler had failed, took out the turbo, everything else. So there's another thing to keep an eye out for is coolant or burning coolant in your system. So usually if we wind up replacing an EGR cooler due to internal failure that also takes out the turbo, we'll typically go ahead and do the spark plugs as well because they will get fouled out. Now for the kicker, this guy. You see that? All of that is oil. And what that is from is, of course, well, I think, no, this is from a different truck than this one. This was a good coil. I keep that one as spare and for uh, testing and evaluation purposes. All of that oil is a fine indicator. You need a new head. Why? Because you've got a valve that's failed. So let's oil into the cylinder and we'll sequentially foul out your spark plugs. Sometimes you got to get in there with a scope or look down with a flashlight, check, make sure everything's dry as it should be. But if you get a spark plug that looks like this, uh, it's time for an expensive fix. Hey, that rhymes. And then next up, see some oblong wear there overall. This one was okay. She just got hot, burnout, uh, typical lifespan on this. And uh, here's one where it was burning oddly right through the end. As you can see there, it's where the cross arc pattern went behind the iridium tip and will result in a misfire. Now, something like that could be this fault of the spark plug, could be the fault of the extension, or could be the fault of the ignition coil. That's why you check them all the time. And if we replace the ignition coil, we'll put a brand new extension on with it. Um, so there you have it, folks. A little bit of things to look for on your CNG spark plugs. Uh, just a dab of failure analysis for you. Now I can finally throw all these spark plugs away. I've been waiting to do this video for some time. Any questions in relation to CNG, please down below. Uh, feel free to direct message me on Instagram or uh, my Gmail, which is on my about page. If you guys got any questions on uh, other things that you might be running into with your CNGs. But until next time, remember, shop safety is just as important as firearm safety. You screw something up, somebody could die, and we'll take care.